What's up? How are you guys today? I'm going to show you how to shield your living situation, house, apartment, whatever it may be, as effectively as possible, depending on your budget. Uh, so when we're talking about EMF, electric and magnetic fields, radio frequency radiation, this Wi-Fi signals from all these modern devices, they do damage the body, they cause a lot of oxidative stress, and it's really the biggest health secret that they keep from you because it will truly get you feeling, sleeping, and thinking better. The main field we're worried about is radio frequency as the electric and magnetic aren't much of a concern and can't really be reduced anyway. So if you're living by power lines, if you're sleeping by a circuit breaker, that's a scenario where you want to reduce the magnetic field by relocating yourself, but for now, radio frequency, the cell phones, the routers, these Netflix, Amazon, Fire Stick devices, all that type of stuff is what we're trying to reduce. Uh, so I have a safe and sound classic EMF meter that right now is reading high in this main room, which I try to stay out of because I haven't shielded it much. But starting with the cheapest and most effective way to shield your body at all times, I'm wearing my Wi-Fi shielding joggers and sweatshirt, which is clothing made from silver fabric, which will protect my body from the oxidative stress. And I mean, I can show you guys real quick. Uh, when we have the meter outside the shirt, it's high, but when we put it inside the shirt, you guys can hear the sound stopped. So when the meter's inside the shirt, no sound. Outside the shirt, very high. So. Basically, 80% of my body is protected just by putting clothing on. The problem is, you know, how effectively can you reduce the head stress just by wearing a hat? It's not really that great. You have to put a mask on too and all types of other stuff. And if you're wearing uh, a full head cover like this, it, it does kind of impede your vision. And in super high radiation environments, you know, it's not always 100% effective. I mean, you know, it, it's really good. It's flashing green, which means there's no radiation. So just by putting this on my head, I'm protected. But like, am I going to walk around like this all day? It's, it's kind of difficult to do that. Maybe if you're on a really strict budget, you can sleep with this on your head and not have to do anything else and be fine. But we're going to go over those other circumstances. So we do have everything, guys, available that you'll see in this video on Wi-Fi shielding.com, you know, with the exception of the meter and some other shielding stuff we'll talk about later. Uh, I will say if you own the house, then a lot of this is not going to apply to you because the most effective and best way to do this is just going to be to put metal siding on the house. So instead of spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on trying to shield every room, ceiling, floor, reduce everything as much as possible. If you're not in an apartment and you, you have the house, it's best spending 10 or 15,000, whatever it is, just to put aluminum up put things on the walls, or even better, if you have a new construction, you can put some type of metal mesh material along everything so your house is essentially a metal box. This stuff we're gonna do now is more if you don't have control over the devices in your house, and you're in a shared living space, and you can't move out for a little while. So this is my bedroom. I have my desk, my working area, and my sleeping area, which is comprised of two silver canopies and three silver canopies. We also shielded the outside with some curtains because we did notice some EMF radiation coming in from some type of antenna. So this is what I would basically deem as the bare minimum for me to have a somewhat safe sleeping and working area. For you, it could be more, it could be less. You might have to put up more curtains. You might need more canopies. You could need less canopies, only one. Uh, you know, this fabric is very expensive and one sheet of it uh, can only block so much radiation. So with all these new modern devices, you could need two or three. So here, in the workspace, when we have two, um, you know, outside we're moderate to high radiation, and then when we get inside the workspace, it, it goes to green. It's not flashing green. What flashing green means is zero radiation whatsoever, uh, which I did achieve in my sleeping area. Yeah, as you guys can see, you know, where my head is resting when I sleep, the meter is flashing green. So whatever we have done here has effectively removed all types of environmental radiation which is kind of crazy considering once we you know, open this up and step outside the safety of the canopy, if I don't lose my mind trying to shift through three canopies, we're back to moderate, sometimes high EMF environment. Uh, one thing I will note guys is I have a fan here blowing some air into the canopy. 
Uh, that's kind of necessary because of the lack of kind of airflow and it, sometimes it's hard to breathe in there for some people. Same with if you put a head net on your head, if you just take a fan and you blow some air onto your face, you'll be fine again. So as you guys can see, we have the inner canopy then we have the second canopy here and then we have the third canopy. So there's basically three on top of each other, uh, which is kind of crazy. Unfortunately, you have to do it in this space. Most people are going to need two. And then some people that are lucky are going to need one if there's not too many uh, environmental factors here. And that's really the best thing to do, guys. You have your work area where you're spending most of your time on your computer, watching TV, whatever. And then you have your sleeping area. Of course, making sure there's you know, no Wi-Fi devices, no Netflix, Amazon stuff nearby. On our way over to the kitchen, I have my router and stuff over here. So this is an example of uh, shielding a device and that emits a very high radio frequency signal. So it's actually turned off. So, you know, if you go on your 192.168.1.1, your router login controls, you can just turn off all the Wi-Fi. So, you know, getting this router bag or shielding cover from Wi-Fi shielding.com might not be 100% necessary. But what these are good for is, you know, if you have family members and you're not allowed to turn off the Wi-Fi, uh, these will actually, in some cases, just reduce the signal to pretty low and you can still use them, uh, which is nice. So if you really want to completely block it and shield it without turning it off, you know, you might need to put a bag on it and then a cage on top of it. But uh, what I'm basically saying is this isn't necessary because I have control over the device and can turn it off. Uh, I just want to show you guys what you can do. So, you know, one router bag is going to reduce the signal greatly and you can still use the Wi-Fi. Um, two is going to completely block it and eliminate it. And you're going to have to just, you know, turn your phone off airplane mode whenever you want to use it for a little bit. And then here in the kitchen, I just did an example of uh, a new product we have, which is the copper shielding fabric. So uh, what's on the ceiling right now is one package. So when you guys buy the 10 meter portion, it covers half the ceiling of uh, a pretty big room. So keep that in mind. And this is where you would get crazy because I mean, I'm not finished here yet. You would shield the entire ceiling. You would do the walls. You would put curtains up. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of crazy stuff and it gets really, really expensive. So if I did this, you know, three more things of fabric for all the walls and the ceiling, it's probably going to be about 600 total. And then the curtains are going to be another hundred. So it's not that expensive compared to paint, but it is a lot of work. So I put this up here with uh, some push pins. Uh, you could use tape, you could use some type of light adhesive glue. So there's two benefits of using uh, fabric like that on the ceiling and the walls over the typical EMF paint. Uh, one is it's reusable. So if you have to move even in two or three months, all you're doing is just the work again. You got to take the fabric down, put it back up. You know, if you paint it, then uh, the, you're probably going to spend a few thousand dollars to paint the walls and the ceilings of one room and the real kicker there is the paint is not really that effective in a super high radiation environment. Like if you're in a New York City apartment and you're getting blasted from every angle and you put a layer of shielding paint up, it's not going to block everything. And there's diminishing returns on the paint. So putting two, three, four, five layers gets very, very expensive and it doesn't shield as much. So with this fabric, if one layer isn't good, you just throw another one on there and it should be 100% good to go. It's thicker than the paint. And uh, that's where you're getting crazy. That's where you're like, okay, well, you should probably just put the metal siding on the house. But as a last resort, if you're going to stay somewhere for like a year or two or three, then you can really, uh, you know, close everything off. I might do that eventually in here. It's just, you know, you're looking at 10 to 15 hours of work per room uh, between putting up all the fabric, cutting it, all that type of stuff. It's not that crazy, but... Um, it is a little bit of work. I just thought I'd show you guys that at uh, how easy and effective you can do it because I mean, this took me an hour, but you know, I'm, I'm working fast and I have some idea of what I'm doing, but you know, just some push pins with the fabric, put it on the wall, put it on the ceiling, put it wherever. The other thing is then like, how are you going to shield on the inside of the cabinets behind it? You're going to put curtains on everything. What about this stuff like the heaters and the vents? It gets really, really crazy. So guys, depending on your budget, you can get some shielding clothing and try to keep your head covered as much as possible. Use the head cover when you're sleeping, you'll be good to go. Um, next step up, if you can afford, you know, a few hundred, a thousand, two thousand dollars, that's where you want to get, 
you know, the bed canopy, and then you want to get uh, the canopy for your working area. And then if you have unlimited funds and you either have to rent an apartment or own the space, that's where you would either uh, do shielding on the floors and the walls and the ceiling, or just put metal siding on the house, which to me, you know, uh, if you're about to spend 10 or $15,000 in the EMF shielding and doing all that work, that's crazy compared to just putting metal siding on the house. Uh, so we didn't really touch on, you know, obviously making sure all the devices are turned off if you can, you know, unplug the fire stick, don't use Amazon Alexa, uh, don't use Bluetooth devices, make sure everything's turned off and, you know, keep your phone usage to a minimum. I try to keep my phone uh, on airplane mode as much as possible and then I'll turn it on and I'll use it when I need to. Uh, maybe I'll do a whole separate video on this, but um, the new 5G phones have an option in the network settings where you can switch it over to LTE, uh, which gives it a, a less powerful signal, which is what I do, still not the best, but you know, since I'm wearing the, the shirt and the pants, I don't worry too much uh, outside of just shielding my head and making sure I feel better. Uh, you can also do things like taking magnesium, and I have a whole playlist on EMF and radiation, guys, if you wanna learn more and understand a lot about it. So thank you guys for joining. Uh, hopefully this helps you out. Wi-Fi shielding.com for everything we spoke about in this video. But as always guys, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks for joining guys, and I'll see you for the next video.